Hello, everyone, and welcome to my session. I'm going to be talking about embedding V8 in the real world, or more specifically, in the native script framework. My name is Tanimira Voyeva, and I'm a software engineer at Progress. I work on this really cool open source project called Native Script. I'm also a GD for Angular and Web Technologies, and if you want to find me and talk to me, the best place is on Twitter or in the karaoke after. So native scripts, our main topic today, after V8, of course. What is it? What is it? How many people here have heard about native script? Awesome. OK, native script is a framework for building native mobile applications for Android and iOS using web technologies, like Angular, Vue, or just plain JavaScript. In short, it is a way to execute JavaScript in the mobile world and build mobile applications with it. We will take a short overview of the architecture of the framework. At the bottom, of course, we have Android and iOS, the underlying operating systems. On top of that, we have the native script runtimes for Android and for iOS, which provide the 100% native API access. But if you ever had to build a mobile application for Android or iOS, you may have noticed that the way to do that is quite different. Like, all the APIs are different. The way to build your user interface is different. Everything is completely different because there are two different worlds. That's why NativeScript also provides a common abstraction for these APIs. It is part of the framework, and the NativeScript developers can use that in order to build layout or build user interface or even style their applications with CSS. And this layer is written in JavaScript, and you can use that so that you can have a single code base and have different applications for Android and iOS. NativeScript also has a very light um, application framework, which provides us with data bindings, navigations, and some other cool things. And if you need something a bit more sophisticated while building your applications, NativeScript also supports Angular and Vue.js. But today we're going to talk about the bottommost levels, the deep stuff. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the Android runtime. The two runtimes are quite similar, and the biggest difference between them is that the Android runtime uses V8 under the hood, uh, whereas the iOS runtime uses another JavaScript engine, JavaScript core. But the principle of how they work is quite similar. We're going to start by explaining how the native API access works. As you may have guessed from the name native script, this is kind of what we mostly brag about, because we have 100% native API access, and this is why you should be using native script instead of whatever anything else you choose. The main advantage but how it works. We'll start with a look at the application package of a native script application. So we have Android, some phone or some device that is running the Android operating system. And the native script application is just a regular Android application, which has some native script magic inside it. And the first part of the magic is, of course, the JavaScript code that the native script developer wrote and shipped inside that application. The JavaScript code is not cross-transpiled or converted or translated or anything like that. It stays JavaScript during the whole life cycle while the application is running. We also have the native script runtime, both the C++ and the Java part. We're going to talk about them, shipped together with inside the application. And the last part, almost, is V8. Why do we need to ship V8 inside an Android application? Well, to execute JavaScript. V8 is a JavaScript engine. It executes JavaScript. It is embedded in Chrome, Node, even Microsoft Edge nowadays, and of course in NativeScript. It is actively developed by Google. It was created from the Chrome browser, and it's one of the fastest uh, JavaScript engines out there. Another reason why we chose V8 is because it has a pretty cool embedders API that we can use and plug into 
the runtime. If you want to read a bit more about V8 and how it works, I highly recommend these two resources. Uh, resources. The first one is a really amazing blog post series, uh, which is a crash course in just-in-time compilers by Link Wark. And the other one is a video, which is very recent. It's called Wife of a Script, and it describes uh, a few of the optimizations that V8 does under the hood while it executes your JavaScript code. It's by Satya and Jakob from the V8 team. So if you want to learn about modern JavaScript engines, these are two great resources to get started. The next part of the NameScript magic, the metadata generator. This is a one of very, very valid JavaScript code inside NativeScript. But we have something that is not usually in the NativeScript, uh, in the JavaScript language, right? Android, where does this come from? Well, let's imagine that on your computer, you have some native library, for example, the Android SDK, and you use that inside your NativeScript application. While your application is being built, NativeScript runs a special tool called the Metadata Generator, which traverses that native library and gets information about the APIs. It gets information about all the global packages, about every single class, about how these classes can be instantiated, about every method in these classes and uh, what are the method signatures. Basically, it gets information how every single method and API can be used. That information is then saved inside a compact runtime binary, which is, again, shipped inside the application. So we have information about how we can create stuff in Java inside the metadata. And the metadata, of course, is shipped together with the whole application as well. And what happens at launch time? We initialize V8, which can execute the JavaScript code. We load the metadata from the files that are saved inside the application. And we attach certain callbacks. And the callbacks are the most important part about embedding V8. They're our way to plug into the JavaScript code and do certain stuff. Let's start by explaining some stuff about these callbacks and how they actually work together with the metadata to provide us with access to the native APIs. OK, we have this expression, Android Media Media Recorder. We're trying to execute that JavaScript code. The NateScript runtime has read the metadata and found out that there is an Android global package. That's why it has created a global object inside the running V8 instance for Android. It also has attached some callbacks to that object, like the package getter callback, so that when we query for Android.media, the NateScript runtime plugs in with that callback. The callback will be executed. And inside the callback, the NativeScript runtime will try to find Android.media inside the metadata. It returns something, some information, for example, information that Android.media has some media recorder. And it also has a package getter callback attached. So when that callback is called, we find the media recorder inside the Android media package in the metadata. And this time, we return a constructor function because this is actually a class. And why is that constructor function so important? Well, because when it's invoked with new, it actually contains a constructor callback, again attached by the NameScript runtime. And this is where the actual magic happens, because the NameScript runtime now creates a native Java object. But how does that happen? Well, we use JNI, or Java Native Interface, and this is basically a bridge between V8 and the running um, Android runtime. So we can send instructions back and forth between the two. So we create the native object. Then we create the JavaScript proxy object that we're going to discuss a bit later. And we return the proxy object to the JavaScript world. If we try to access something inside that proxy, well, actually, this proxy object is not very simple. It's not a plain object. It creates some callbacks, uh, contains some callbacks as well. 
So when we try to access the same random field, we know that this field exists in the Java world, so that we have attached a field getter callback. And the field getter callback actually queries the original Java object. But there is a slight complication here. OK, we can get the result from the Java world, but the data type is different from the JavaScript data type, right? So Java lang string is not something that we can assign to a JavaScript variable. And that's why there is a marshalling service. Its role is to convert data from Java to JavaScript and vice versa. And at this point, you may ask, OK, wouldn't that be terribly slow if we try to convert everything? Well, yeah, obviously it will be, because if we try to convert objects, it's not a good idea. This is another reason why proxies are quite useful. So for objects, we just create a plain JavaScript object, which has the, the same methods with the same signatures and the same um, members as well. Uh, and inside that, we have callbacks. So that when you call some method with the same name on the JavaScript object, the callback will be called, and the NativeScript runtime will call the original Java method through JNI. And this is a very cheap operation, creating new JavaScript objects instead of uh, converting data. If you call a method, same story. A method callback is triggered. We call the original Java method. The result is marshalized again, and it's returned back to the JavaScript world. If we have arguments in that method, the arguments will be converted to Java data format. And then uh, they will be, the Java method will be called with the converted um, arguments. OK, let's see just a quick overview of all these callbacks are, have confused you so far. We try to instantiate new object and assign that to a JavaScript variable. We call the constructor, the constructor callback. The NativeScript runtime creates a new instance of the class through JNI. The instance is returned, and because it's an object, the NativeScript runtime creates a JavaScript proxy object. Then we try to call some methods on that proxy. We call, actually, the method callback without knowing that we're calling it. Everything is hidden. It happens behind the scenes. But the method callback then calls the original Java method. The result that we can get is returned through JNI, and then it's marshalized and returned back to the JavaScript world. That's all the communication magic that happens. But you may be wondering at this point what happens with these objects. Like, we create JavaScript objects. We also create Java objects. They're connected in some way. So we actually have to take care of the, their life cycle. And in JavaScript, we don't have to manually um, manage the memory. There is a garbage collector that runs, and its role is to retrieve the memory of the unused objects. It also has a non-deterministic nature. So we can't really tell for sure when the garbage collector will run. And the other kind of complication is that, well, the Android runtime also has a garbage collector. It's pretty funny. So we have two garbage collectors running. We have objects in both worlds. And that's one of the biggest challenges of the NavScript runtime. We have to kind of try to <laughs> synchronize that. We have to ensure that no object is collected if there is a living counterpart. For example, if you create some Java object through JavaScript and then try to access it, if the Android garbage collector collected the native Java object, that's not really cool, because you will try to access something that doesn't exist, and the application will, will crash. Like, it will crash. Yeah. You're running a mobile application, and it's not, it's not really cool user experience. OK, in order to plug in to the wife cycle, we use finalizer callbacks so that when the garbage collector of V8 marks something that, uh, for collecting, says that some object doesn't have living instances anywhere and it should be collected, the final user callback will be called. And this is the place where the NASCAP runtime is um, plugged into. We have strong and weak references. Let's see how these actually look like. OK, we have the same example as before. 
First, we create the native object. Then, we create a JavaScript proxy. And then, the NativeScript runtime has two collections, one for strong references and one for weak references. When the objects are first created, we create a strong reference, or a link, if you would like to call that, between the two objects. And if that's confusing, okay, the proxy lives inside V8, the original object uh, lives inside the Android runtime, and the references live inside the NativeScript runtime. All right, time to collect stuff. Some garbage collector runs. We can't really say for sure if it's going to be the V8 garbage collector or the Android runtime garbage collector. But let's say in this example that V8 will decide to collect the memory first. So there is no one in the JavaScript world using the JavaScript proxy recorder, and that's why it's marked for collection. But at this point, the finalizer callback is called, and the NameScript runtime sees that there is a living strong reference. That's why the strong reference is turned into a weak reference, and we instruct V8 not to collect that object. The next time when the Android garbage collector runs, it decides to mark the recorder object for collection because no one in the Java world is using it, and it sees that there is a weak reference. And because it's a weak reference, this object will be collected. So let's say that at some point, time, the V8 garbage collector runs again. Well, now there is a weak reference, and the weak reference doesn't point to anything. And because we don't have anything out there in the Java world, this object can also be collected. It's marked for collection, and now we can collect it. But if we had two consecutive garbage collector uh, collection runs inside V8, and we still had a weak reference to a living object that wasn't created by the Java garbage collector, the V8 object wouldn't, wouldn't have been collected as well. So this is a normal cycle. And as you could imagine, there are some uh, challenges that happen because we have two running uh, garbage collectors. Well, we could get out of memory exceptions. Usually the objects that are created in the Android application are not really big, so we wouldn't have that happening for a Hello World application, right? But the problem is that, of course, yeah, we have uh, a few garbage collection cycles that should be run in order for some memory to be retrieved back. And if we create some big objects, this can cause problems because the memory is not retrieved on time. For example, we can have images. And an image, let's say that that's, this is a Java array in the Java world. The Java array is quite big, whereas the JavaScript proxy is not so big. It's actually just a plain object with some callbacks attached. So it actually looks like that memory-wise. We have a lot of memory in the Java world. We have a really plain JavaScript proxy and the Java, the Android garbage collector is actually dependent on the V8 garbage collector in order to retrieve this huge chunk of memory. So at this point, the V8 garbage collector, even if you have tens of thousands of these small plain proxies, it doesn't have pressure to be run because we don't really take a lot of memory in the uh, running JavaScript virtual machine. So V8 doesn't really have a reason to trigger garbage collection. And if that doesn't happen on time, well, we may um, cause out-of-memory exceptions because we're taking too much space in the Java virtual machine. Some solutions are <laughs> more like strategies to overcome this because there is no straightforward um, deterministic solution because of the nature of the problem. The first one, there is an API provided by V8 that um, lets us instruct V8 about the memory that is allocated inside of it. So in our case, we can uh, say to V8, OK, the Android application that, that is running actually uses this amount of memory. And this memory is used because you have created some JavaScript objects. And the JavaScript objects are still pointing to living instances in the Java world. 
So this should hint V8 to run garbage collection more often because it's more aware that there is some memory that should be freed. But it doesn't really, uh, I mean, it works in practice, but we can still get uh, out of memory exceptions. Another important thing, we're doing this internally inside the NativeScript runtime. So the NativeScript developers don't have to use that. And uh, it is a technique used internally. Another solution, we can force garbage collection, of course. We can say, V8, come on, run garbage collection. Mark these objects as free to be retrieved. Make these strong references weak. Then we can run the Android garbage collector. And then we can run the V8 garbage collector again. And this is not the <laughs> best thing ever, because it doesn't guarantee that the garbage collection will be run. It just kind of schedules it or hints it that it should be run. But we don't have a guarantee that it will be run, and we don't have a guarantee that it will be run in that order as well. Also, it's obviously not the cheapest operation out there. Like, you're traversing a huge tree of objects, and you're checking if they have living references. It may have the opposite effect. So this is not a, <laughs> the best solution ever. Like, you can do it. It is some strategy, but we don't really recommend using that. OK, let's take a look at this again. We have a strong reference. What if we didn't have references? And what if we had the control over saying, like, this Java object can be collected because I'm not using it anymore in the JavaScript world? Well, the NativeScript runtime exposes a function called release native counterpart. And we need to provide the proxy object. And what happens, basically, is destroys all these references. So we invoke that. We basically instruct that we're no longer using this uh, native object, and it can be retrieved. So whenever the next Android garbage collector runs, it is no longer dependent on V8's garbage collector. It can mark this object as unused, and it can safely retrieve it. And as the last part of the presentation, something like a bit simpler, multi-threading. <laughs> what is the point? Well, the JavaScript code in native script is run, executed on a single thread, which actually happens to be the main user interface thread. And if you see where I'm going, this can cause some problems with lag and junk. So you can see some glitches while your mobile application is being used. And this is not the best experience for a native mobile application as well. So first, yeah, you know what is junk, probably. Uh, it is the percentage of frames that are dropped while you are doing some calculations. We're not going to focus on that. It's important to know that in an ASCII application, if you're just building user face, you're actually creating native Android and iOS uh, widgets. So you shouldn't experience junk in a native list view when you're scrolling, for example. If you're creating animations, is the same thing. Uh, you have many ways of creating animations in native script with Angular, with CSS, with JavaScript. But uh, internally, it's actually creating native Android applications. So you shouldn't have any problem while running application, uh, animations. The other thing that is commonly, um, we're commonly asked for, if you're creating an HTTP request, well, the plugin that you're going to use creates a background thread in the Java world, which wouldn't freeze the main UI thread. But you may see some junk when you're executing CPU-intensive operations. And the same thing would happen if you're executing CPU-intensive Java code in an Android application. So what is the solution? Well, worker threads, essentially background threads in the JavaScript world, which wouldn't block the main UI thread. The API is based on the Web Workers API. Uh, we don't have JavaScript memory sharing but we have a way to communicate between the worker threads and the main UI thread. And final thing, I'm going to ask you a question, so you have to be patient for 30 more seconds. What is a worker thread in native script? OK, two hands. First, is it an isolate? Isolate is V8's way to isolate and execute some memory, uh, sorry, to isolate some memory for a call that is being executed. The isolates can run in parallel, and we don't have memory sharing. Context. One isolate can have multiple contexts. 
Uh, we don't have memory isolation, and we can't run contexts in parallel. Also, you have to explicitly specify the context that some code is being executed on. Isolates or contexts? Isolates. Contexts. OK, what's well, OK? Isolates. <laughs> OK, it's an isolate, cool. <laughs> All right, so this was about NativeScript and V8. Um, if you want to meet me afterwards, you can find me in Twitter, and I'll be coming to you. And I also want to thank my colleague, Vladimir Muntafu, who helped me with this uh, presentation. And this is his handle on Twitter as well. So thanks a lot.